how does it feel knowing that no no other player in Don, in Doncaster Rovers history has ever played more games for the club than you? I think I think personally it's something that as you're still playing it's hard to sort of um, to take in. I think I've been planning to to retire for the last three or four seasons. I took my pension at 35, um, so it's quite easy to sort of. Um, just keep going. So I, I don't focus on what what's sort of happened. I try and I try and focus on what what I need to do. And um, I think it's important for me personally to to keep going. And I think we've got a young squad that, that keeps me going, if you like. Is, is that a role that you, you relish at the club? Obviously, like you said, you know, you know this club inside out. And a manager doesn't often have an asset like yourself who can you know pass on what you know about the club to the younger players. I think so, but I think, like I just said, I think a manager could come in and see me as a threat to an extent. Been here that long, um, doesn't really know a 38-year-old. Why is he still here? Is it just because he's been here that long, or does he actually contribute to the team? Um, and, and I've had that over the last sort of five, six years, where managers have come in and maybe thought that. But I think with with the manager at the minute, that isn't the case. I think he's asked the people within the club. Um, and he's done his homework and like I said, he's pulled me to one side and he trusts my opinion and he trusts um, what I'm doing and he sees what I give every single day and um, I've just got to keep doing that and, and helping the team. Let's get back to your career then. Obviously, you started out at, at Darlington, but it was it was Newcastle United where you, you got your first team debut as a, as a professional uh, and it was Kenny Dalgleish that brought you into the club. That must have been something else. Yeah, it was. I mean, I never wanted to be a professional footballer. So um, to sign a YTS at Darlington and then six months into that sign for one of the top four at the time, Kenny Dalgleish, um, Sir Kenny Dalgleish as he is now, brought me into the club. And um, yeah, my dad, my mum and dad were absolutely over the moon. And for me, I didn't really appreciate it at the time. I was 17 years old. Um, going into a, a club like that, I was just playing football for me at the time. And, and it was Bobby Robson that, that gave you your first team debut against Tottenham. Yeah. Um, I mean, what was it like playing for a legend like that? It was unreal, but again, 19 years old when I made my Premier League debut. Um, again, Sir Bobby Robson, testament to, to what he did in, in football and how he, how he was perceived within, within the game. Um, I remember he, he, he kissed his hand and slapped me across the face as I was coming on and said, don't let me down. Um, That's what you want from <laughs> And yeah, I mean, that'll always stick with me. And just the way he was, he was such an infectious character. Um, but again, I didn't appreciate it at the time, what position I was in. And um, I think sometimes it's a good thing. But um, for me, that's probably one of the reasons why I didn't go on and, and, and have longevity at that level. Before we move on and talk about the other clubs you play for before coming here at Doncaster, you mentioned there you didn't fancy being a professional footballer. Yeah. I know it's a bit late for a career change now, but <laughs> what, what did you want to do? I never really thought about it, if I'm being honest. Um, I just loved playing football. I, was, I wasn't in an academy, didn't go through a school of excellence. I played Sunday League, grassroots football, all the way up until I was 16 with my friends. Um, was down the park every night. Just absolutely loved being out playing football and obviously got the opportunity at 16 um, playing for my grassroots team, played against the Darlington team. and. They saw something in me that um, that nobody else did, and within sort of three months of being a YTS at, da uh, at Darlington, I got an England call up as well. Um, got asked to go and play for England and represented England under 17s in the European Championships. So, yeah, it, it was it was a quick. Um, did, did your attitude change then? As soon as you, you someone else told you you were good enough, did did you then want to? You know what it was? It was it was a full time football. So as soon as I went into training every day. Um, I'm all or nothing, so I put everything into that. Up until then, I was still a kid. I, I never really sort of um, envisaged myself playing professional football. I never even thought about it. <clears throat> so as soon as I got the opportunity, I give everything. And within that six months, obviously, um, I improved a lot and people saw that there was potential there. Um, and it was the same when I went to Newcastle. Um, unfortunately for me, when I made my debut, I thought that that was it and that I'd made it and sort of slacked off a little bit. Newcastle at the time were, like you said, there were top four opportunities for a young player like yourself back then, not now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to, to, to break into the first team squad will have been few and far between, and, and, and you went out on loan to, was it Hartlepool? Yeah, twice. Um, and you did, well, you did pretty well, actually. Um, then you found yourself at Exeter. Yeah. Um, tell us about your time there. Yeah, obviously, I was on, on loan at Hartlepool twice and, and got a, a taste for first team football, so 
I had a year left at Newcastle and decided I wanted to leave and, and try myself and reinvent myself and, and start my career in first team football. Exeter gave me that opportunity and I could not have gone any further away. I mean, 350 miles it was from my home, <laughs> living away from home for the first time just after my granddad had passed away. So there was a lot, a lot to deal with from a, from a young person's point of view and um, going there on the back of Exeter not doing well over the last three or four seasons, always flirting at the bottom of the league and then getting relegated out of the Football League that season. Michael Jackson was, was on the board, uh, David Blaine, Eura Geller was, was chairman. Um, so that yeah, it sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot went on in, in that first year yeah. and, and subsequently we, we, we dropped out of the Football League, which was difficult to take. It's got to be a worry when what the club are concentrating on isn't really what they should be. Like, it seems like they weren't concentrating on the football side of things. But there was a losing mentality there and, and I, obviously not saying that um, out of context, if, if you asked anybody at that time, I went there and, and recognised it straight away. It was when you won a game, it was like as if they weren't expecting it. And when, when you lost a game, that was it was part and parcel of the makeup. And it was only a matter of time before they, they, they dropped out of the league and they did. And thankfully they reformed, got back in the Football League and they're, they're doing really, really well now, which is, which is great from my perspective. It's, um, it must be difficult for a, a player such as yourself back then when you're new at a club and it dawns on you that there is that losing mentality in a squad yeah. and, and obviously it's been it's been reported that you almost quit football when X2 were relegated, is that true? Yeah, massively. I think I lost my love for football um, living down there and been away from home and been away from my family for the first time. It's, it's difficult, you know, especially when your football isn't doing or going as well as it's expected to go. Um, <laughs> two years ago I was making my prof Premier League debut in front of 55,000 people and then going to St James's Park getting relegated out of the Football League. It's difficult to take for anybody. Um, but for me, I got a massive opportunity to come back north and, and join a football club that was on the up that had got two back-to-back -back promotions and was starting life in League One. Obviously, having been here for 15 years, now into your 16th season, yeah. you've seen more highs and lows at this club than probably anybody else that isn't a supporter. Yeah, as, as much as I've had promotions I've had relegations as well and two from the championship which um, one of them we went straight back up and um, we went down to League Two and we bounced straight back up as well and it was a massive responsibility for me when you do get relegated when you've been part of the club that long is, is, to, is to try and get back up it's, it's not always easy and not many teams do it but I've been lucky to be part of two teams that have done that um, and again it's testament to to the way the club is and um, how resilient it is um, the last three or four years have been brilliant in terms of how well the, the club's thought of within the community and, and the community work that it does. Um, it brings a, a hell of a lot of support and backing from the, from the supporters. I mean, I always sort of look to, to 40 and it would, be, it would be really good to get to 40. I mean, to say that as a professional I've got uh, 22, 23 years um, and, hit the, yeah, and to hit the 40 mark and potentially get another promotion out under my belt and um, it would be amazing and I don't see any reason to just stop just because I am 39, 40 years old. If, if I am contributing and playing and feeling good then I think I said in another interview that I'm doing people an injustice that, that have to retire through injury and have to quit because they can't do it. Um, I feel like I owe that to myself and to, to people as well. Do you, when you finish the match, do you still feel like you could go on? Do you still feel like I'm still fresh, I'm still ready for the next game. Oh, 100%. I mean, I don't wake up in the morning and, and think, oh my God, I've got training in the morning. I mean, I'm travelling from, from Middlesbrough, so I'm travelling an hour and a half every day, um, and I feel unbelievable. I get in every morning, can't wait for training. Um, come a match day, I, I absolutely relish it. I mean, I think I appreciate it more than I did when I was younger. So every single game, I treat it as it's my last. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm still feeling good, still feeling healthy um, and still feeling fit. And, and again, if, if I'm contributing and helping the younger lads, and I don't mean that in any other way than, um, than it's meant, then I feel like I'm, I'm offering value which um, is part and parcel of why I'm still playing.